friends and welcome back to Amanda Muse. We are live. It is Monday. I'm already being summoned into the living room. Come here, baby. <laughs> it's live. And I have a three-year-old, so whoops. Jackie, you have to come here. All right. Here's what we're gonna be talking about today. So if you're new, then you might not know, but I had both of my children in Malaysia. Um, I became pregnant and had them there. So I actually don't have any experience having children in Canada, so I actually don't even know how that works. Um, hi, thank you for tuning in. Um, so I thought, you know, I went through like a plethora of emotions when I found out I was pregnant, even though it's exactly what I wanted. So we're gonna talk about this. Um, for those watching the replay, I'm gonna say hello to a few people. Hi, Julie, hi, Kiki. Um, thank you for tuning in live. So, okay. It's gonna be a fun one. It's like going back in the history books. So I recently, hi Annette, I recently did um, two videos. One where I talked about my birth story with Esme Revisited. My daughter Esme is five. And then, um, hello, hello. Um, and then my son Jack is three and I sort of told you how I fell pregnant with him. So I'm gonna put all of that, which side, in the eye so you guys can watch that later. Okay, so I'm seeing a lot of you guys um, have had children in different countries so this should be fun and I have a feeling a lot of you are gonna be like nodding along here so let's just jump into it um, so when I moved to Malaysia I was married and it was sort of part of the plan that my husband Dean and I were gonna start a family that was sort of what we were hoping and um, it took a little longer than expected but once I fell pregnant with Esme I remember freaking out like I had full on pregnancy anxiety. I'm thinking that might be a thing because I feel like a lot of moms on YouTube have talked about um, having anxiety while pregnant and it took me by surprise, let me tell you that much. Um, and it was almost like once I fell pregnant and realized I was pregnant, um, there was also an incident with Esme where I got really sick in Bali. I'll link that video too. I don't want to go into all the details, but what basically came of it is I was like, okay, we're packing up and we're moving back to Canada because I cannot do this in a different country. Like I felt very alone. And I want to say the big word like stress, like it was just like full on stress. What am I doing here? I can feel completely out of my element. Looking back though, it makes perfect sense because my personality is one, um, um, Medea says she agrees about that stress too because after a year of trying to conceive she felt very anxious and, and vulnerable yeah it's such a weird feeling um, didn't want to leave the sofa Ex honestly with Esme's pregnancy Dean went out and we bought a Nintendo Wii and I sat there and played this weird paint game forever like I'm not even good at video games so it's it was so depressing because I couldn't even like get to the proper levels that's a whole other story. But basically stress ensued. Um, I felt like I didn't know what to do. Truth be told, I wouldn't even know what to do in Canada, but it was like I didn't have a support network. I didn't have a friend I could call and be like, hey, I'm I'm pregnant and now what? Um, Annette was saying she cocooned a lot too. That is a very positive spin on that because I was gonna say I became like a hermit, but cocooning is better. Um, just a second. Jackie, come here if you're having trouble. He's on the iPad and he always plays games that are too old for him. Like not scary games, well sometimes they're zombie games. That's a whole other thing. Okay, so stress. I've got my little notes here. Um, big time stress. So the first thing I did, I'd say, if you are pregnant and you are abroad right now, the best thing to do is jump on the internet. Um, start doing some research. And so I had in my mind a style of pregnancy that I want, or not pregnancy, but birth I wanted to have. I was hoping for a water birth. Didn't even know if that was possible in Penang, Malaysia. It turns out it is. Um, but once you start to do your research, you'll start to figure out Okay, first of all, where am I gonna go? Um, oh, Farah, she lives in Malaysia, but delivered in India. Interesting, I mean, it's so fascinating. We have our babies all over, right? It's the one thing, we all do the same in different countries. We all can birth our babies. So in that sense, try not to worry because you will be, you will be in good hands no matter what. Um, so I ended up doing some research and found um, a doctor who was a pioneer of water birth, but it took me a little bit to find him. So first I found a hospital I could go to. Now in Malaysia, you have 
private health care or public health care. We chose to go private. Um, I'll jump to that because let me tell you, there is costs associated with giving birth, which as a Canadian is a completely foreign concept. Like in Canada, you don't pay like that for health care. So that was a shocker. Um, but I'm jumping ahead. So I found a hospital. I got to the hospital. Oh my gosh. I remember being so filled with anxiety and like nausea that I had to like lean on Dean sitting in the waiting room. That is not my nature. Are you kidding me? So that was a weird one. Um, when I did meet with the doctor, I didn't vibe with her. I felt, um, I don't know. It just, there was no connection, which of course compounded the stress because now I felt out of my element, full of anxiety about being pregnant, and I didn't even like the doctor that I had. Hello. So the next thing is just, as I was saying, do your research. Um, I started to find forums with other mothers. Um, a, a foreign, sorry, there's a Kimberly was saying she lived five hours away from her parents and had her preemie. Mm. So I just have to remind people that I'm, I'm doing a live video. <laughs> So I didn't vibe with the doctor. That was kind of stressful. And then, um, so yeah, I started doing my research and I found some mom forums and forums where people were talking about having given birth abroad and that really helped. Um, Annette, I feel like I'm, I'm vibing with you because Annette was saying she started to read Ina Mae Gaskin. I was all over that. I read all of her birth videos, breast, or birth books, breastfeeding books. I was really immersed in this very hypno birth, natural birthing type of thing. Um, now I'm not going to jump in the whole birth story, but ultimately what happened is I ended up finding my OB in the end. So I did some research and I realized, oh, the doctor I actually want is in the same hospital I was at. So I'm going to get a referral. And I did, and it was no big deal, but I truly felt very guilty about, um, saying like telling that doctor I just I'm not vibing like I want a different doctor I felt really bad about that but if you are feeling that way follow your instinct and just get the switch because it's going to make a world of difference in how you feel about your birth experience um because there's so much to be said about um, a mother's experience in motherhood and how she's introduced to it how you're made to feel at the time of your birth it's like life-changing okay so I started to realize okay so I've got this forum I found these people I found my doctor and after talking to him I started to feel better you know like I just started to realize oh this is pretty normal how I'm feeling he totally calmed me down um, it was just like I actually remember being like this is a really fun experience and started to settle into my role as a mom now of course when I was about I want to say like five months pregnant, I ended up taking a trip back to Canada, which helped because I ended up being able to get more books like that I wanted to read on motherhood um, and get my pregnancy clothes, like my maternity wear, because I, I'm a fairly tall woman and much larger than a lot of the um, local Malay women where I was living. And so nothing fit me. There was no like time maternity I could go to, it just wasn't an option. Um, and everything that was maternity wear was pretty outdated and I didn't love it. So it was like very big and bulky, like that concept of like hiding the pregnancy rather than like working it, all the curves. So basically I came back to Canada, stocked up, felt really good, came home. So the next thing, on my list is basically the cost. So cost and coping kind of go hand in hand. <laughs> Sorry, Jack is calling me. Jackie, come here. <laughs> So, okay, so I come back and we ended up moving. We, we needed a bigger place. The place we were living in had a lot of noise. It's funny as you start to go through the memories of all of this. It's yeah, like, oh mama, yeah. I want this one. Oh, let's see, I gotta help him. Oh no, I don't know how to do that. Can you play a game you already have? Where is? Ask daddy, where's dada? No. Oh, that looks fun. Do the jumping one we just got. So I ended up moving no, to a I new neighborhood. Asking, didn't we just talk about mama's skills? Oh, that's cost money. It's too expensive. Oh. <laughs> yeah, why is daddy when mommy's right there? How are you get out of here? Um, there. Okay, go play your game you have. And then we're going to go for lunch. So I end up... Same one. I know, it costs money. So I ended up meeting yeah. other women. Yeah, mom life. I ended up meeting other women that were... Um, yeah, where is Dean? He's home. Hey. 
Baby, cool. Can you go find dad? Oh gosh, that's $21. No. App store, fail. Um, here you go. Go find dad, sweetie. Normally I'd help them, but I don't want you guys to just sit here and wait as I play the app store. Um, okay, so then I found other, I started to realize there were other women having babies and then all of these pregnant ladies started like popping up everywhere. So I felt excited because I thought, okay, like I'm gonna make friends, but I was so shy, which is so weird because I'm not shy anymore, I don't know. Um, slowly started to realize there were other people having kids, but that's a whole other story. Like I was still very lonely, but the one thing, Oh no. Can you go downstairs and find dad? It's fine. <laughs> so. Daddy? Dada! Where is that dada? Dada! Oh man. Am I gonna have to pause this video? Stand by. Dada! <laughs> Found him. Found Dean. Okay, so. Sorry guys, oh, such is life. So, okay, um, fine, did you hear that big yell? Um, okay, the coping part. So in the end, I ended up finding friends after birth, but the one thing I wanted to say is that as a mother or a soon-to-be mom overseas, you truly feel like you're having FOMO, is that the right thing, like fear of missing out? You feel like you're not, like you're lonely, you feel like you're isolated, you feel like you're doing all of this alone. But the thing I wanna say is like looking back, a lot of moms, no matter where they live, are experiencing that. And that I think motherhood in itself can be extremely isolating and lonely no matter where you begin your motherhood journey. And I think that's that's so important to share because um, that was not expressed, that, that was not written in a blog post anywhere at the time that I was, becoming a mom and I wish I had known that looking back because I remember thinking like you're alone and there's nobody around and Annette was saying you're alone with a lot of women <laughs> yeah there's like a lot of people around but you're not quite I don't know you're alone wherever you are and I kind of like wanted to put that out there one of the like the loneliest parts the fourth trimester is dark yes girl it is and I think it's dark like wherever you start like becoming a mom. Um, I ended up, when I got into my fourth trimester, so once Esme was about three weeks old is when I started to meet people and that was a huge game changer. But I feel like it's almost like your ticket, your entry ticket into like the mom club. Cause it's hard to go to a baby group when you're just expecting, you feel kind of weird, even though you should. And I invited lots of pregnant women to my baby group so that we could all become moms together. Um, but it's remembering that no matter where you are, it's gonna feel like that, right? Um, so Jessica was saying it's amazing to hear everyone's pregnancy journey, especially being overseas, totally. And I think there's a lot of fear of the unknown, which of course for me, I hadn't had a child anywhere else. So a lot of it was brand new. Um, but I definitely felt like, you know, I didn't have a baby shower with Esme because I didn't have anybody around to do that. So when I did come back to Canada around my fifth month of pregnancy, um, we sort of had like celebrations with people and that was fun. But, um, yeah, there was no baby shower. I ended up having my baby shower with Jack, which was exciting. Uh, but I know that's totally backwards because most people, by the time you have your second child, you're not having a baby shower. And it's not like I needed anything. I actually just wanted to have a party <laughs> and like celebrate and have things with cute blue and like baby stuff and like a diaper cake, you know, because I just, I didn't have any of that. Um, but you sort of have to make it what I'm realizing when you're overseas, you have to find your people, make your own fun. But the other thing, so that's sort of the coping element, but the other thing is realizing the cost. So when I had my children overseas, I wanna say that it cost me about between seven and 8,000 Canadian dollars to have each child. Now, I don't know if that's expensive or inexpensive compared to the US. I want, it's probably less expensive, I'm not sure. Anyways, it was a lot of money basically for uh, two Canadians who were like, oh, that's fun. Um, and we had become expats, so it wasn't like we could revisit Canadian things and Medicare and like get all of that. Sounds like US prices, Eileen is saying. Okay, so then I guess it's pretty comparable. Um, it's about the same in the US. Gosh, that's expensive. What are these people doing who have like 10 kids? How do you how do you afford that? Um, but you're, oh yes, Madiha was saying, very good point, so the pregnancy, then you gotta get the passport, the visa. Oh gosh, getting the visa. So here's a fun fact about having a Canadian child 
in a different country is that Canada changed their rules a little bit, which this is super frustrating and I don't know if this is going to change back, but let's say, okay, so Esme is for sure Canadian. Both Esme and Jack are Canadian because Dean and I are Canadian. Now let's say Esme grows up or Jack and finds a partner overseas and they marry and that person is, I don't know, German. I, I don't know all the re visa regulations in other place. But if they have um, a child in a different country, that child is not Canadian. My brain's like, what? How does that make any sense? So it's super frustrating to me because a couple reasons. One, the chances of my child or my children being the type to travel are very high because their parents have traveled, they were born abroad. Um, and so that really upsets me because the chances of them leaving the country are very high. So what if that was another expat and they had a baby overseas? Like, is this person non-passport worthy? Like it just, it's very complicated. But all I wanna say is I hope that that changes because I think it's only been a fairly recent thing and that a lot of the people that are gonna be affected by this haven't quite grown up to fight for their own rights yet. So we'll see. Um, but anyway, super frustrating stuff. But at either way, those to go through the citizenship. So the citizenship took a year. The Canadian passport took about two weeks, I think it was, uh, only because we mailed it in. With Esme, we had to go into the Canadian consulate. So we had to drive from Penang to Kuala Lumpur. <laughs> oh my God, <laughs> driving with a brand new baby. Oh, it was like nine million hours of breastfeeding. It wasn't even that far of a drive, but it just was so exhausting. Um, oh, and then the worst part is I got to the Canadian consulate and there was a minor typo on the passport information that I provided. And in order for me to fix it, I was gonna have to go back to KL. And I was like, nope. <laughs> so I worked some magic and I fixed it and the guy accepted it. But it was, it was a process, right? Thankfully, when Jack came around, I had been through all of that um, and then it was pretty simple and the lady at the consulate knew me and it was all very easy stuff so I'd say yeah two weeks for a passport then they can travel and then citizenship comes later even though the documents are in process but you know it's certainly a thing because you have their Malaysian birth certificate which you now have to get translated into English you have to get it notarized like it's a there's a lot of paperwork and the only unfortunate part about that is you're so fresh into motherhood and it's pretty exhausting and now to tack on all of this administrative stuff was like I'm overwhelmed um, and now I don't know when you have your child in Canada how much paperwork you have to do because I have no experience having a baby here so I just don't know um, but yeah definitely um, yeah do your research find out what you need to fill out but everyone's very helpful like at the hospital they provide you with all the information I had emailed the consulate well you know into early pregnancy and was like hey can you help me with this they provided me with all the information um i see a lot of comments about cost of birth worth mentioning in canada um it doesn't I, i'm assuming it doesn't cost you it doesn't cost you anything you go you have a baby you come home lovely but <laughs> not in malaysia um it probably would have been different with if I'd had a baby in the public um, hospital, but I had a water birth turn C-section. There was a little bit of trauma uh, for me and it was very hard and Esme was in the NICU for a little bit. Like this is all documented. Of course, I'll put that video later and link it. So anyway, that's that. Um, and I guess the last question is, would I do it again? Like would I have another baby in a foreign country? And I absolutely would. In fact, I joked with my doctor. So the only, person that I really cried with when I told them I was leaving Malaysia. I mean, I cried a lot, but when I told them I was leaving Malaysia was my OB. And when I sat with him and told him I was leaving, I just cried and cried. And I was like, I don't know why I'm crying, but I do know. I mean, the thing is you share such a transformative, monumental experience with a person. And he was so kind and just, I mean, every month we sat with him and we chatted. Oh God, there is no pregnancy announcement coming soon. I lean, don't scare me like that. But if I, I joke and say, if I was to ever have another baby, I would have to go back to Malaysia. Like, how do you even do this in Canada? <laughs> But if you ask Dean, we already know his answer. He, uh, yeah, no, he's, he, it was a hard time for him. That was the other thing, if you wanna talk coping. Um, you know, I didn't have my mom, I didn't have my mother-in-law, um, that would be Dean whipping around, but I didn't have like friends. I didn't have anybody I could ask for help with my pregnancy. So every pregnancy, whim, worry, stress was like onto my husband. So 
he honestly experienced, he has like a little PTSD from that year. <laughs> Poor guy, <laughs> which I often try to minimize, but it was actually really hard for him because, you know, like he would come home from work and I'm sure this happens to a lot of people, but like, you know, he would come home from work and I would be like, can you like run out and get me all this food that I need and get all these things for me? And I was just like, I could, I was like a million pounds and so, such a precious dainty little flower. Like I would walk 10 feet and need to sit down. Like it was, it was an experience. Oh my God. Um, but I would say having a child overseas is pretty exciting. I think first of all, it's a pretty epic story for your child. So if you wanna like, if you're having a hard time right now and you need like some light at the end of the tunnel, first of all, whoop, hello, earring falling off. Your kid's gonna get a pretty cool story. You know, Esme introduces herself and she's always telling people like, I was born in Malaysia and that's like her thing. She loves to say it and so she certainly identifies with it. It was an amazing experience into motherhood. I did have a lot of help, so that's something else depending on the country you're in um, and the style of living there. You know, we had Amas, so we, which is, I think Ama is a direct translation to Nanny. I think so. And so people helping, um, the healthcare was amazing. I was able to text my OB, like, what? You know, I think I'm in labor. He's like, oh, let's call me, let's chat. Like it was, it was amazing. So, and even Jessica was saying here that she lives really far away from her family. And so she relied heavily on her fiance. And I think that's the thing is that experience of feeling like, oh my God, you know, everything is so different for me and I'm having this baby far, far away but so many people experience that even in their own home native country. And I think that's a good reminder to know that like you aren't alone because if you do struggle with a little bit of anxiety, that could just compound it, right? Um, but anyway, that was my experience. And yes, Medija, it takes a village to raise a baby. It totally does. Um, and I do read the comments as I go. I think it's, it, this is what makes live video fun. Of course, all these comments go away. And so afterwards I have to go and comment, you know, unfortunately but even as she was saying her um they live 700 miles from family and husband and totally it's um it can be a very a pregnancy it can be very overwhelming it is not all barefoot butterflies roses for everybody oh god mine was more like weight gain thigh rubbing <laughs> back pain <laughs> oh my god i mean i did it again i have two kids but like it was an experience. Um, but anyway, that's my story for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you are expecting right now, um, uh, congratulations and I wish you well on your journey. And that's it, you guys. So please subscribe if you're new. I put out videos three times a week, Mondays live, Wednesdays and Fridays. And pizza, Eileen, exactly. And Miriam was saying, would you ever consider living overseas again? I totally would. And I don't think it's the end for me yet, so. Who knows? We have no plans right now to live abroad, but boy, once you get that experience, it's kind of, it's, it's so, it's so much fun and it's such an adventure and I have a really hard time putting down roots, but that is another comment. That's another video for another day. All right, you guys, thanks so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Join me on Instagram because I'm doing a lot of like daily vloggy stuff on Instagram. Bye guys. See you soon.